All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to So You're Thinking About Graduate School here in 2021. Uh, welcome to the Wayne State University Graduate School's Professional Development Series. This is a unique event for us this year where we are talking about uh, the, uh, the prospect of going to graduate school and what that all entails. My name is Nick Matar. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications at the Graduate School. Um, and I am here with our host, uh, Chantel Caven. She'll be uh, leading the session here momentarily. But before we begin, if you enjoy what you hear today, uh, we actually have a graduate school open house tomorrow afternoon at 4.30 p.m. You can access that on the graduate school website. Um, you can also begin your application today if you'd like, also on the graduate school website. That is at school dot wayne dot edu um i without further ado I, i'll turn it over to Chantel. if if you have any questions that come along we have a, a smaller intimate group today so please feel free to drop them in the chat or um, if Chantel's okay with it you can just unmute and, and talk as well um, but Chantel, without further ado please go ahead and take it away all right thank you nick and thank you all for joining us virtually Again, as Nick mentioned, my name is Chantel Caven. I'm an outreach specialist here at Wayne State. I'm also an MBA student. So I have a concentration in information systems management. So I wanna welcome you to Wayne. I wanna give you a quick overview of what we'll be discussing today. So this is our agenda. First, I wanna talk about why people attend graduate school and some of the benefits, give you some tools. Then I want to present a case for why you should consider Wayne State for your graduate education. Talk a little bit about funding uh, and some fantastic programs that we have here. And then go over some resources at Wayne State and then open it up for any questions that you all may have. Uh, but before I begin my presentation, one of the questions that I wanna ask you all to think about is, why do you want to attend graduate school? So I'll give you a couple seconds to think about that right now. And if I have any brave souls, if you're willing to share, uh, feel free to just unmute yourself and we can hear why you're considering it or throw it in the chat about why you are considering graduate school. Is there anyone here that'd be willing to share why they are? Interested, it's the Louie. Feel free, unmute yourself. Tell us why do you want to attend graduate school? Well, um, I want to become a college professor, you know, at a community college at least, you know, so I need to get a master's in that area in English. And I mean, given the fact that I'm disabled and I come from a culture that doesn't value education as in the liberal arts, I kind of want to fight that, fight that prejudice. And, Oh, all right outstanding. thank you for sharing is there anyone else that would like to share or like i said feel free to throw it in the chat but thank you louis for sharing um one of the reasons why i ask you that question is because graduate school is going to be a journey uh there's going to be it's time consuming it costs money and it's going to push you sometimes and it may be even overwhelming at times however if you can remember why you're doing this I guarantee you that you'll be able to achieve this goal. And so let's get into this presentation now. So why do people attend graduate school? There are five kind of anecdotal reasons why people attend graduate school, and some may argue a six. The first is a graduate degree is required or mandatory. For some positions, it's an industry standard, kind of like Bluey here. I include a few examples here, and others are like, um, counseling or physician assistant, audiologist, et cetera. A uh, second reason why someone may want to uh, attend graduate school is they may want to move up in their career. Maybe they want to be acquire more leadership. So maybe your manager aspiring to be a director or a vice president or CEO and having some more educational credentials could better position you for those roles. And if you look at uh, some job descriptions, sometimes it may say graduate degree preferred. Uh, more reasons why someone would 
be interested in attending graduate school is to make a career change. So if you're looking to shift your career and change by earning a graduate degree, coupled with those previous transferable skills, it can probably propel you to that new industry a little more easy, more easily. Another yeah. reason, yes, another reason why someone may want to attend graduate school is because you have no prior work history and the job prospects may be or slow. The economy is in recession. Grad school is a good option, a way to situate yourself above the fray, because you'll acquire, while in graduate school, some great foundational tools. So as the market opens back up or becomes more promising, you will be prepared for those new positions. Or maybe you want to pursue a professional or doctoral degree in MD, law, dental, and you had some challenges in undergrad, or you want to prepare yourself to get ready for that MCAT, LSAT, DAT, et cetera. A graduate degree may make you a better candidate. It can provide an opportunity to demonstrate your academic prowess, as well as have you have some other credentials to present to that school or bring to that institution. Lastly, as our good friend mentioned here, if you're looking to be an academic, so a professor, you will need to get a graduate degree. And I'll just add a six uh, because you meet these people who are just lifelong learners and they may have several master's degree, a law degree, a PhD. They just love school. So those are some of the reasons why people will attend graduate school. Now let's talk about some tools that will help you on your grad school journey. So what are those tools? The first thing I recommend is learn your learning style. Now, what may have worked for you in undergrad may not work for you at the graduate level. There's a lot of resources out here for you to kind of take and, and, and see what learning style you actually are. I'm not, I didn't provide one that I say, oh, this is the best test or way to find that out. Feel free to Google and see what they are. But what I did include are the seven adult learning styles. You've probably heard of the first three more commonly. So visual, auditory, uh, linguistic, um, you hear those more common. But there are other four others that you will hear a lot more more recently. And then there's a lot of resources, as I said, that'll help you predict what that style will be. So um, the next recommendation is not as what I would say new, but it's crucial. So the thing is you wanna set a schedule. Um, it's really important because you have need an academic schedule because let's say you work full time like myself. So how are you gonna to get to campus? Where are you going to park? Making sure you have that lecture time set aside. Uh, or if your class is not in person, it could be synchronous, meaning that there's a certain time that you will meet to have that lecture and so you need to set aside to make sure your tech is all in place to hear that lecture or lastly it could be asynchronous where you just are online and you can pick that class whenever you need to still set aside a time to review that lecture still set aside a time to review those notes and then i also recommend that you set aside some personal time while you're in graduate school, you could have something to do pretty much seven days out of the week, but you need one day where you can at least say, this is mine. For me, it's Friday. I won't do anything academic. I will, that's that time where I could actually convene with my friends, go out to dinner or have an adult beverage, whatever that may be. Make sure you set aside some personal time. It is yours and you earned it. The other thing is to create an environment for studying. Uh, a lot of times you may figure you have a space, but you wanna make sure that it's something that will be conducive for you. I know for me, there are certain subjects that I have to have like complete silence. So I need to make sure that I have an environment for that to happen. So have this dedicated space for you. And then also incorporate those things that may work with your learning style. So if you're visual, like maybe it has a whiteboard in there or maybe it has, you have big post-it notes, things that will be, help you in that studying process. And the last thing I'm including, this is a personal thing, is snacks. Because a lot of times when you start to study, 
you just get hungry and you want to have all of those things accounted for so you don't have to get up and go and stop your study time it's all there and it's all present for you for that now other things that will help you along will be finding out all of the resources that are available to you as a graduate student before you attend this institution. So what are the academic resources? Like, do they have a writing center where you can have your paper read prior to coming? Or if you have a teaching assistantship or something to that effect, can I learn how to be a better TA? Uh, do they have study skill what resources for me to improve my studying? In terms of funding, what's offered, what's available? Is this something that I'm just going to have to foot the whole bill for? Or are there scholarships? Are there fellowships? Are there assistantships? All those things you want to see if those institutions have those types of things available for it. Additionally, outside of the academic piece, what else will help me with my graduate degree. So do, can you develop me professionally? Are there things where I can take advantage of career resources? If I'm a veteran, maybe, or is there veteran affairs? If I want to attend a conference, is that something you could sponsor for me? If I want to know more about equity, diversity, inclusion, can you help better prepare me in that or conflict resolution, something to that effect? So those other soft skills that you can, could be um, enhancing as well. Are those things available to you? And then networking. Can I talk with alum, recent, those that may not be more seasoned, all of those things, are they available to me? You know, are there professional organizations? Are there student organizations? What are those things that this institution offers? And then wellness. Wellness is going to be the thing that you continue to hear about in the graduate education that you want to make sure you're taking care of yourself. So is there a rec center? Can I go work out? Uh, do I have an advisor that I could uh, speak to about how to set up my academic journey? And then, God forbid, something happens. It, you know, does my school have something in place for me to be assisted with any kind of crisis that may happen in my, um, over the time that I'm a graduate student? So find out about those things. Um, is there a disability accommodations available. So what are all of those things before you actually come to the institution? So what are some of the benefits of attending graduate school? I'm just gonna talk a little bit about those kind of in a general sense. So first is it increases your earning potential. On average, those with a graduate degree minimally earn 23% more in annual income. And in some degrees, it's even more like 63%. So um, then their peer who has their bachelor's degree. So you could be sitting next to someone at your current employee who earns a lot more just because of this extra credential. And then it gets you connected with a lots of people. So it kind of enhances your professional network. Most of your professors will be, are often in the industry and you can get real life, real time exposure and experiences by working with them and working through them and their network of folk. And then lastly, um, there's a certain amount of recognition that comes with having a graduate degree. It means you are a subject matter expert or you have expertise in research. Uh, there's this respect that comes with having that graduate degree on your resume. Now let's talk a little bit about Wayne State. So we have about 27,000 students each year. We average around six to 8,000 graduate students. We're in Detroit, Motor City, Midtown, if you're not around here, uh, which has been considered one of the best, 10 best up and coming neighborhoods. Uh, it's kind of in the home of the museum district. So the Detroit Institute of Arts here, Charles H. Wright Museum. We're in walking distance of the theaters, all the professional sports teams. And uh, so all of the action that you're looking for is right here and available to you. We have um, 11 schools and colleges, including the med school, law school, um, ranging from high STEM demand to the humanities, to performing arts. We offer over 200 programs across all schools and colleges. So you can earn um, several different kinds of degrees. So the first could be a graduate certificate, which is less than 30 credits. 
or master's degree, which is between 32 to 36 credits, or a doctorate, which will, which will be go beyond 60 credits. I wanna provide you with three reasons why uh, you should choose Wayne State. So the first is um, our research. Wayne is a Carnegie designated urban research institution, which essentially means we had the highest level of research here. In other words, we receive hundreds of millions of dollars to support research. Um, we're also a member of the University Research Corridor in which we partner with the University of Michigan and Michigan State, uh, which is one of the top 10 most profitable research corridors in the country. Another reason why you should consider Wayne State are our students. Uh, you will have, be in a classroom with some amazing, amazing students. And at the graduate level, I'll say you'll have classmates that are diverse in their experience and their thoughts. Our students are change agents. They want to serve and engage in the community, which is a good segue to our third region, which is community impact. Uh, the work that you do as a graduate student at Wayne State can immediately influence Detroit, the metro, and the world. I want to present a few cases, uh, the first being the Humanities Clinic. Um, our doctoral students work with nonprofits and the public sector to use their research expertise uh, with projects and operations um, in these organizations. Another example of our community impact is our work with the Healthy Urban Waters Program, with the Flint Water Crisis, the Great Lakes Water Authority, which I'm sure people have lots of opinions. We understand the firsthand the importance of studying water in urban areas and we want to assist in ensuring its safety for the community. Uh, the next example we have is our work with the cultural district and finding ways to reduce barriers so the arts is available to all in the community at large and not just the connoisseurs. Now let's talk a little bit about the admissions process. Our dean has a vision that our graduate school is a place for all that want to receive a graduate education. Um, since we are school for all, we'll perform a holistic review of your application. We aren't looking at just your GPA, though it is important. We're also looking at those other um, things and nuances like your persistence, your resilience, your excellence. Ultimately, what we want to determine is can you be successful here? And can we support you in your success? Our process is a two tiered process. So the first half is solely the graduate school. So we'll look at those first few bullet points. So do you have a degree? Um, have you earned your bachelor's degree? Uh, do you meet the minimum GPA? Do we have your transcripts? We'll check your English proficiency. The second half of the two-tier process belongs to the schools and colleges. So they may require recommendations and interview, additional materials, et cetera. It varies by the program. So you wanna make sure you're aware of those requirements. Now, with every application, there's a deadline. So here are the deadlines that you'll see on our website that are recommended. However, since you're at this presentation, I'm going to share Chantel's decision on the, web, uh, on, on the deadlines for your application. So I recommend that you apply when the maximum amount of funding is available. So I'm going to just use fall 2023. So let's say you're looking at coming for fall 2023 you wanna make sure your application is in by the end of 2022, because we start looking at applicants in January. So all of the money's available then, as you get closer and closer to that deadline date, less and less funds are available. So make sure you get your application in before the deadline dates that you may see up in there. Uh, now that we're talking about money, we might as well continue to talk about money. Uh, so, the graduate school itself, we have funding. Do we have it to cover all of those six to 8,000 students? No, but we do have some funding. So I always recommend throw your hat in the ring. Even if you don't receive funding your first semester, 
I'm a living example that you continue to apply. The first year I applied for scholarships, I didn't get anything. This is my last year uh, on my uh, of my education journey, and I received the Keen Endowed Scholarship. So don't give up. Continue to apply. There's some money out there. Let them pay for it. And then, as you see here, we have some master scholarships, and we also have the GPS, so the graduate professional scholarships, and those are available to both master's and doctoral students. So how do you apply to get this funding? Um, we have fellowships that provide financial support for graduate students. Most of those have, um, they don't require a teaching uh, associated with them, but there are some responsibilities with those. So um, consider that option. And that's something you can be nominated for. There are also assistantships that you may hear. Not every department has one, but there are some that do. And you wanna check with those departments to see if that's something that could be available to you. With assistantships, they do require either a teaching component or a research component. And they are also something that you will be nominated for as well. So how do you get nominated? Get to know the department and express your interest, but more importantly, not only your interest, but how your interest relates to the, your future aspirations and that department. So they're trying to see if you'll be a good fit. So if they're going to offer this money or this funding to you. They're trying to see what your long-term goals are and how do they mesh with our particular department. So consider that as you are applying for that. Now, if you are a Wayne State student, we do have a couple programs. And if you are one of our Canadian neighbors, we have something for you. For Wayne State, I'll go through this real quickly. Uh, we have a program called A grade or senior rule in which you can take graduate school courses and they also count towards your undergraduate degree or the undergraduate fee. So you're saving money and you're fast tracking through your master's program. Talk with your advisor if you're interested in either of those. For my Canadian relatives uh, or friends, I should say, we have our good neighbor policy and which you will qualify for in-state tuition. And there are a few counties in Ohio that also we offer this to as well. So consider that if those will apply. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the resources we have here at Wayne State. So we have an academic success center. I will say it is more widely for undergraduate students, but there are a lot of resources that are offered at the academic resource center that graduate students could take advantage of as well. So like how to improve your study skills, stress management. Um, they have like meditation options and things just to help you with your wellness, your, your academic aspects as well. And then if you have a teaching assistantship, there's the Office of Teaching and Learning to help you improve there. If you're like myself and I need somebody to review my papers ahead of time, we have the Writing Center. And that is offered to graduate students too, so you can take advantage of that. And then we have a professional development series. That is what you all are participating in this. Right now, this one is dedicated about thinking about graduate school, but there is a gamut of different uh, series that uh, workshops that you could take advantage of from the stock market to conflict resolution, um, speaking skills. So there are a lot of things you could take advantage of. Then career services and placement. I know a lot of times we think of it as an undergrad option. But there are a lot of graduate possibilities there. They even have paid and unpaid internships from micro to um, quick, meaning quick flash internships to others that sustain over six weeks. So definitely take a look at that. I'll tell you I was eligible for two. I have not taken it up, but you know, there were a couple that I was eligible for. And then we offer the counseling and psychological services. So I would say, don't even think of that as just in a crisis mode. They have support groups. So if you just want to talk about, you know, things that are going on in life, you can, they have that available to you. Um, they have options to just come talk if you need to, but then if there's some, the requirement where you might need some intervention, that's available to you as well. In terms of being innovative, Wayne State is still on the cutting edge of that. I would say the things that are going on at the iBio, um, Bio Sciences Center is amazing. They do work on disparities, so work on asthma, diabetes, cannabis, vaccines, a lot of that work is being out of the iBio. 
Um, if you've been on campus or around campus, we've been building the Hillberry Gateway complex and shaping up really well. And then since we're the Motown, the Motor City, we had to get into mobility. So we have a center for the um, advanced mobility that is how, out here as well. So in closing, I wanna to talk to you about why you should consider Wayne State for your graduate education. Um, the first is that our institution is about graduate education is available to all who want to. I think that's a really huge thing um, as you think about it, because there are some places where you don't feel that that way. But at Wayne State, it's for all who wants to be here. We're a fantastic research institution centered in an urban community. You won't find that in many places. The students are like yourself. They're amazing. They're change agents um, who are persistent, resilient, and produce excellence. And then lastly, your work in the classroom will impact the Detroit community and create a greater world. As Nick mentioned earlier, we do have an open house that will be on tomorrow. And the difference I would say there is that you could actually communicate with the schools and colleges there. I'm going to drop this link into the chat so that you could uh, if you're interested in registering, you can do that. It's from 4.30 to 6. You could also hear from current students, learn a little bit more about funding. But uh, in general, I just want to thank you all for coming to our presentation. Are there any questions that you all may have for me? And feel free either to throw in the chat or to um, unmute yourself. I'm going to stop sharing. Well, I am almost done with my MA application for the fall 2022 semester. So would you say that um, it's acceptable to turn it in in a couple of months, December or so? Yeah, and then I also would say this, if you come to the open house, if, and I'm not saying it just for this, but uh, we are offering a fee waiver. So if you attend mm -hmm. that event, you could get your fee waived for that too. So. That's something to consider as well, since you're almost done with your application. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other questions that we have out here? And feel free, this is really what that session, this session is about, really answering your questions. I've been in your shoes. I had every excuse of why I wasn't in graduate school and it's taking me to this time to actually attend. And, be enrolled, so I know what it's like. Um, I know it can be scary. I know it can be all of those things. So, any okay. questions? Uh, hello. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have a question about transcripts. I've actually sent my transcripts to World Education Services for evaluation, but I'm kind of having a, a delay in the evaluation process and the deadline and considering to start uh, my uh, graduate school in January 2022. Mm -hmm. So uh, would, would, anything, would it affect my application if I'm not able to turn in the transcript by November 1 deadline this year? You know, I will have to defer that to my great team at the admissions office. But what I will say is that, um, you know, I won't say that I've seen it in the past. We'll try our best to make sure that you will be able to meet all that criteria by November 1. So just continue to follow up with us because I don't want you to be hindered by something like that. So don't, don't worry yourself about it. Just keep working at it. If there's still some challenges, I'll throw my email in the chat and you can still, you can reach out to me directly. I have Gideon has your hand up. So let up. Uh, Feel free to unmute yourself and go on. I'm trying right. to yeah. Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah, um, thanks very much for an awesome presentation. Now Thank I have two, um, three main questions. Now the first has to go with um, the program. Uh, for instance, I'm actually interested in pursuing history at a master's level. Okay. I did undergrad, I did history at the undergrad and I did international studies also as at a postgraduate level. But looking at the situation now, I feel more like I want to specialize in either American or European history. 
been a Ghanaian and we know that most of our faculty members, we don't have much of them within that field. So the bigger tax would be that the next decade or two, we need to have young people or scholars coming into the field. Um, I've been thinking of possibility of being admitted into such a program for the fact that I actually undergrad, I did some history, I did some US history, but I feel more like I still need to do more. And so about the chances of being admitted into the program. You know, that is, you know, I've been where you are. I don't want you to think that you can't get in. So I say, throw your hat in the ring. Let's go from there and see what happens. Um, a lot of times, let's say, for instance, and I'm not saying this will happen if you weren't, you can get some details on why you weren't and what can make you a better candidate, you know, in the future. But I would say, throw your hat in the ring. I, I literally, I will tell you, I had, I was like, I'm not going to get in this is this and I went and I talked to an advisor and they accepted more credits than I was anticipating and she's like you want to start for the fall or the spring some when do you want to start so just throw your hat in the ring and we will go from there you could talk with an advisor in that department but I say you know don't worry about it you I'm sure you'll be fine for okay. all right all right okay so uh, the last question Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so still with the program top up. So I have BA in history, Latin, and English. I have MA in international studies. And basically, I want to go ahead to the doctorate. But this is a case that um, when states actually don't offer African history, that has become one of the challenge that I've been thinking through. Looking at the still possibility into either to go ahead with either European history or American history. I've seen this also competition, and you have other applicants. Who are having sufficient knowledge within this field? So that's a, a good question. Um, one of the things I will say this: um, don't get. I don't, let me see the best way of how to say this. This is Chantel talking now. Um, think about what you want to research in, and it may be in a different different department. And the reason why I say this is I have a friend who is doing their PhD work at Wayne State um, about patient advocacy. But they're doing it in the Department of English because it lined up with what they were doing. So I, I don't want you to get a fixed on that it has to be this route because maybe your research could lend well in a different area if that makes sense. Does that make oh. sense to you? Or like oh. what you want to study? maybe communication I'm, I'm just i'm not saying this for certain but i'm just saying think about how it might relate to another department and could fit well for what you actually want to do your research on so consider that as another option for you oh that makes sense i have a few questions in the chat that i want to also address real quick so uh one of the is like do you think it's too late to start the application for fall 2022 no the application isn't closed yet so you can still apply for that is it too late to apply for winter 22 i will say that's contingent upon the department that you are applying for so some of them may have closed some of them may still be open so that that's contingent upon that department and then let's see one more question out of the chat So um, someone's like, I'm finding it difficult to submit my application for fall 22 without the application fee. What can I do? Well, why you can go to the open house tomorrow. We're going to waive your fee <laughs> if you want to consider that. So that is one option. If you're really close <laughs> to submitting your application, I would say think about doing that. The other is if you check the box for the fee waiver, um, it should allow you to still submit your application without it. But if it's not, Again, I'm going to throw my email in the chat and you can feel free to email me. And there's another question. Can I have all, um, submit my application for having all? Yes, you can do that before having all of your materials. I'll say submit it. You can submit your application and still be in the process of getting those other pieces, if that makes sense. Are there any other questions that you all have for us or for me? This is your time. I'm here. I think I'm pretty good, but you know, if you have any questions.
Hello. Oh, a question. Oh, yeah. Well, Phil, I'm going to fill this chat and then, is it Kuno? I'm going to yeah. go for you. Um, so, advice about writing your essay. I'm going to just give a couple things from my time. The main thing that I would say is make sure that you are thinking about what that department has and how you, because at the end of the day, we're trying to figure out how you will mesh with that department, especially if you're looking at your doctoral piece. Um, do you align with whatever that department is about and their future research? So consider that and making sure that they are kind of mesh. If you had some challenges in the past, um, it's fine to talk about them, but also talk about how you overcame them. So we're not just wanting to, I won't say everyone has challenges. So how are you also able to overcome them so that if a challenge presented itself while you're in graduate school, we know that you would be able to handle that as well. So I hope I answered that question for you. Uh, Kuno, did you want to still ask a yeah. question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ma'am, uh, first of all, good morning, all of you. Uh, uh, yeah, I have some specific questions. Uh, actually, I applied for the fall uh, 2021 uh, for PhD in mathematics, uh, but what I, what happened uh, that my uh, uh, Duolingo score was uh, low. That's that's why, uh, and also I didn't I couldn't submit all my documents uh, for the fall okay. 2021. That's why mm -hmm. I got a decision that you couldn't uh, submit your all the documents. So that's why we can we can't consider right yeah. now. Uh, number number one. Uh, 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 my question is that uh, I, uh, if I apply for, for the fall 2022, uh, whether the university will consider the letter of recommendations uh, for of for my fall 2021 or not? Whether they can, uh, yeah. No, uh, yeah, that's a, a really good question. I'm gonna have you email that one because I don't want to answer it here because it sounds like very specific information. So again, I'm gonna throw my email in at the end of this uh, as we're finishing up for you to feel free to email me. Um, but yeah, that's a kind of a specific. So I just want to make sure I get the correct information to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Um, do, 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 do. So let me see. Any other questions out here that you want to ask? Or I will go to the chat. Okay, so there are some fee waiver questions in there. Um, if you are eligible for a fee waiver, you should be able to uh, receive that. Um, if you already paid for it, we won't waive it afterwards. So that's not something that we will do. But if you um, are eligible, we'll definitely waive it for you. Um, there's a so there's a question about OT or occupational therapy. There are some prerequisites. I would highly recommend you talk to that department um, in the pharmacy and health sciences so you can make sure that those are out of the way. Maybe you have them in, when your prior degree. So make sure you have a conversation with them about that. Uh, other than that, are there any other questions that you all may have? I'm going to throw my information in here. Oh, well, if not, I want to again thank you for coming to our presentation. Uh, we did have. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to answer a couple of these last two questions really quickly, but thank you for attending our presentation again tomorrow. It's our open house. If you come, you can, you are eligible for a fee waiver if you haven't already submitted your application um, for that, just for your um, presence at the open house. Uh, our general minimum GPA is a 2.75, but it can vary by department, so some programs may be a little higher than that. So still check with that program. In terms of like rolling admissions, uh, 
that's a good question. You're going to have to ask Trent on the TRS program, the neuroscience program about that because I don't know their specific deadlines for that. So you will have to follow up with them on that, that particular question. Uh, are there any other questions that you all may have? Can you tell us the location of the open house? Yeah, it's a virtual open house. So, oh, okay, great. Um, it's an easy location for you. Let me see if I can get this and throw it in the chat to um, the link to it. It's virtual, it's from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Uh, there'll be some information from the graduate school first, and then there'll be breakout sessions for the schools and colleges. If you go on our website, it has a list of some of the schools and colleges that, are, that will be there. So you can check and see if the one you might have an interest in will be participating. Any for the open questions? house, oh, sorry. No um, problem. No problem. <laughs> Um, will will the link for the Zoom session be sent out tomorrow for the open house? Yes. So as soon as you register for it and or if you already register for it, you'll have it by tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Again, um, the question for Charlotte uh, regarding your application, you want to have the best application, so I don't want you to rush your application. Uh, I just have a kind of a rule of you want to be in the mix when the most money is in the mix. So as you are ready and prepared, feel free to let it go then, but um, don't feel like you have to get it in sooner if you're not ready to submit your application if that answers your question. Any other questions? Well, again, thank you. We have other events that you can attend. Again, the open house is tomorrow uh, at 4.30. Feel free to stop in by there and then check out our other events that are here through our professional development series. And great, you asked a lot of questions. I hope I was able to answer some of your questions and also give you a reason why you should consider Wayne State and also graduate school. So thank you for joining us today. Have a good one. Thank you, you too. You're welcome.